So I want to talk to you about how I completed one of my dream armies. A lot of people have grand plans on creating these elaborate armies, whether they be heavily converted or masterfully painted, or if they just lie between there somewhere, uh, but they are very, very good in the competitive scene. Either way, I bet a large portion of these armies don't see it past the buying and bringing home stage. Possibly even being built up and painted, but I would imagine a very small percentage actually end up being completed. And... Here's my thousand sons. What I'm about to show you though is one of my ideas which I actually completed. The idea and the concept came to me. It took a long time granted, but I actually completed it. As Bud would say, hashtag completed it. There is a catch though. I made it for a game I don't actually enjoy. I saw a conversion of a converted samurai into a kind of Oni Samurai-esque Stormcast and I really liked it, I really liked it and that image, that image stuck in my mind for a long time um, and I never really forgot it. Unfortunately I don't know who did it so I can't give credit to the person who did. Whoever did do it, if you know who you are, thank you, you inspired something great. I did think to myself though, one day wouldn't it be cool if there was an entire army of Samurai Stormcast? Years went by and my imagination just kept on adding to this concept. Every time I would see something Japanese or Chinese, Asian-esque, it would add to the concept in my mind. I had little bits to take a, a kind of image or part of an aesthetic and put it into the Stormcast and mix them all together. Now I know Chinese and Japanese are two very different sort of cultures and they can be two very different aesthetics. However, I'm from the West and we are <laughs> it all blends into one with us, so uh, apologies to everyone out there, uh, but the influence was the same and I got some great ideas and the image kept on building and kept on growing in my mind. Additional things popped up like dragons. Uh, now I know dragons are quite significant in Chinese culture, I don't know how significant they are in Japanese culture, but I took the concept of dragon and I was like, ooh, what? wouldn't that be cool in a samurai stormcast army? Now, samurai, I believe are Japanese, they're not Chinese, but again, no, I'm mixing aesthetics here. And I thought, what would a samurai dragon stormcast look like? At some point I decided I want to see what this would look like, however I didn't want to commit to a massive undertaking if it was just a cool idea and that's as far as it would go. So I then had to decide what to do next. Then enter Warhammer Underworlds. Warhammer Underworlds is a skirmish game set in the Age of Sigmar universe. The warbands you can assemble are as low as 3 models ranging up to as high as 8 to 10 models. This allowed me a gateway into testing out my concept because the Stormcast Eternal Warband has three models and I thought this would be a good opportunity to try it out. Also, didn't have to spend a lot of funds on getting it. So, win-win. It'd be a cool little project and no harm, no foul. It's not a massive money sink. So I bought the initial starter set. Also to mention the game is quite fun as well and I started hacking apart the minis. Now my concept hinged on some core parts I found from a company called Puppet War. These are the shredder components. I like the fact that they use the word shredder because it gives me a nostalgic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles vibe with them. These parts are typically used for Space Marine Terminators, but with a little bit of clipping and a little bit of sanding, they nicely fit the Stormcast Eternals. How you exactly do this, I can't, 
I can't show you too well because uh, it's each individual pad fits on the Stormcast slightly differently. You do have to trim the Stormcast themselves, but they get there eventually. Quick edit here. I went back to Puppets War to have a look and see what these uh, samurai parts are called. And it turns out they're not Shredder anymore. They're actually part of the Bushi range. Um, and Bushi sounds just as weird. But have a look on Puppets War for anything with Bushi and you should see a similar thing. I think they've redesigned them, rejigged them a little bit. Um, they've still got samurai helmets on there, they've still got the katanas, they've still got the bushi banners and the bushi shoulder pads. I'm still not entirely sure if I'm saying bushi right, but bushi, bushi? Boo, boosh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, have a look on Puppets Wall site for the bushi range, they are what I used. They were an older iteration, so you may not be able to find the exact same thing, but close enough. So to add element to the shoulder pads, I also added in katanas, bushi banners, and samurai helmets as well. This kind of completed the ensemble of the Stormcast miniature and gave enough difference and change to them to make them not look like the standard GW Stormcast, and it actually gave them a unique, flavorful character of their own basically standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the rest of the Stormcast in a unique setting. Now the colour scheme was a little bit of a look dilemma. I wanted something quite striking but also something that would give a bit of a nod back to the initial inspiration of this army. I had a couple of ideas for colour schemes. Uh, one of the first ones I like to look into was the Terracotta army. Now this had its own merits, but the downside to it was that uh, it was very bland and on a uh, brownish dark tabletop mat or board, these guys would blend into the background and they wouldn't give that striking effect which I was also looking for. Then I decided to turn to the color wheel and see if I can find something striking which would fit the purpose. Looking at the colour wheel, I went for complementary colours, so basically look at one side and then look in the opposite colour. What I came across was green and red. Now this also fitted into the terracotta feel, however, I didn't go with a full terracotta look on them. Another aesthetic of uh, Eastern culture is the colour jade, or the rock jade, and I thought this would be kind of cool, having a jade army. So I started making my Underworld's Warband into a, a Jade Warband and I wanted to start by making a Jade Marvel effect. Now I have a good friend Moggy's Miniatures who did a video on how to paint Jade, there should be a link up there somewhere. And this, this gave me the inspiration to do this colour scheme and then I thought okay well, if I go with green and then red heads and shoulder pads, this gives me my contrast that I'm looking for. What I found out, after trying to paint jade marble, it takes ages. Absolutely ages. I didn't want to do that for a whole army. I don't mind doing it for three, but I don't want to do it for a lot. This is when I reached for the airbrush and I tried a test with the airbrush and I got quite nice effects. It's not a marble effect. It's more of a solid green, possibly jade, but it's sort of leaning more towards a, a scorpino green. But I still liked it, and this was a much quicker way than trying to do marble, marble effect on a lot of miniatures. If you want to see a painting guide on how I painted these, have a look at the link below, above, wherever I decide to put it on the Chilling War Gamers channel where I've done a tutorial on how to paint these guys. Now, after painting some a couple of these Underworlds models, I I was getting a feel for this army. But I say army, you probably know what's happened by now. But the idea was balance. Uh, I wanted this, this Stormcast regiment unit, Stormhost thing, Stormhost, I think that's the one. I wanted them to show off an element of balance. I wanted to show a peacefulness combined with utter destructive power. So I wanted to give this serene look to them as well as making them look quite formidable at the same time. It's a nice contradiction in its own right. 
At this point, I can successfully say I was getting inspiration left, right, and center. Every single new Stormcast model I was laying my eyes on was giving me inspiration to do something else. Uh, if I saw the Arrow guys, I thought those guys would be quite cool as like samurai archers. Um, the the guys with the big axes, and I thought those guys with the horns, they would look quite cool. Um, just as these kind of Oni-esque, really menacing, big stompy guys, which to be fair, that's what they are in Age of Sigma anyway. But as you can guess, right now, inspiration leads to the next thing. Hobby hoarding. By this time, I had already started amassing quite a sizable army, hunting around on Facebook trading groups, looking on eBay, even using GW's Christmas bundle as an excuse to lay into this Stormcast idea I had. Hobby hoarding had successfully sunk in at this point and I was collecting everything I could find a good deal. I wanted this army to be epic. As most of you get that idea when you do hobby hauling, you think this is going to be epic. Here's the problem. After amassing all of this hobby goodness, I didn't know where to start. I had my three Underworld Warbound Stormcast that looked beautiful. And then I had another hundred or so models I had to paint and hack into and convert. Other way around, convert and all that jazz first, then paint. But yeah, now I had to do a lot. And I really didn't know where to start, or what to do, or where to go. And life sank in. Guess what? They went in a box and stayed in the cupboard for over a year. Then 2020 happened. The pandemic hit. And this was, surprisingly, storm my Stormcast Army's Ray of Sunshine. Because this was their time. This was their moment to get their day in the sun. I had some spare time on my hands, I would need to finish some projects, and this was a project I really wanted to finish. So why not have at it? Also by this time, I had also fallen out of love with the game Age of Sigma. I generally didn't enjoy it anymore. However, this project was one I wanted to finish. I wanted to finish it just for the sake of finishing it. It's something I wanted to see, it's something I thought would look amazing, and I would be very proud of it, even if they never got to see the tabletop. I also came to this conclusion, once I had finished it, if I wasn't in love with the game anymore, do they deserve to be in my hands? And this is where I made a conscious decision that I'm thinking, after this is done, they need to go to a new home. So this was now a commission for myself. So off I went into machine mode and I do what I do best. I get everything out, I get it all constructed, I prime it all, I hit it all with one color, I hit it all with the next color, and I go into batch machine mode. Uh, a lot of people hate this, a lot of people despise this concept, however, it's something I'm find, finding a knack for. I can seem to tackle armies in one solid hit now, rather than doing a squad at a time, this and that, my brain says to me if I do a squad at a time the colors won't completely match up so if I do the entire army at the same time all the colors will match it's an OCD thing not everyone's got it but I do so there we go there I went off into machine mode and the stormcast started to take shape something some conscious happened when i was building this army as well when i was collecting all the parts i added in a lot of monsters and creatures into it this gave me the idea of balance as well that this storm host was quite connected to nature and the other creatures around them so there's a lot of dragons dragonoids whatever they are griff chargers griff hounds the bird things aether wings that's it i know some names and Again, it kind of completed this ensemble of balance. This would end up influencing the way I base the models, as I wanted to add an element of peace and calm to these monstrous killing machines. So I used some advice from a friend at Geek Gaming, and I mixed two different flocks together, white and rose, to get a cherry blossom effect. Now, I don't know if I've messed up the words, but I probably have. Anywho. 
This cherry blossom effect sprinkled on the base gives an element of peacefulness and serene sort of atmosphere next to these absolutely monstrous killing machines. The cherry blossom effect added to the bases gives a contradictory peaceful element to the tools of war that are displayed on these bases. It's a small thing but it's one of the things I like most about this army. So with the creatures I wanted to modify them, however the GW kits are so precise without a heavy amount of conversion effort, you can't really do a lot with them. However, the dragon, that did get some attention. The lower jaw of the Star Drake is from the Star Drake kit. However, the rest of the head is from the Creature Caster Emperor Dragon kit. I had a lot of other ideas of conversions I wanted to do in this. For example, the Prime, I wanted to make him look like Raiden from Mortal Kombat. However, after sort of assembling the model partially, I realized that was going to take a lot of effort. If I followed that through to completion, I think the project would have stalled and it wouldn't have gone any further after that point because too much effort and too much time would be sunk into one thing. Instead of the army reaching completion, one model might have reached completion. By that time, my efforts and energies would have worn out. So I opted to a more conventional, more closer to the ex existing army's aesthetics conversion. So uh, head swap, we added some extra sort of banners and poles. Um, but yes, it turned out quite nicely in the end. I think benefit it benefited the project more than doing this heavy conversion. If I had infinite time to go back and do that, hell yes, I would make a Raiden Prime. But there's only a certain amount of time in a day and a certain amount of energy one person can have. Also, I think the new Stormcast models, they could be pretty good as other Raidens, to be fair. So, have this other Asian element of where you've got these Mortal Kombat-esque characters in there. A Mortal Kombat Stormcast army, now that's an idea. I love this army. However, I dislike the game system that it's in. So, it brings that element of balance back into it as well. Ultimately, I believe this army is destined for someone else's tabletop. However, I think and I hope they'll be very proud of it, whoever it goes to. So if you like this video, please hit the like, subscribe, share it about to your friends if you can. Uh, it all helps the channel. If you want to purchase any of the Games Workshop products you've seen in the video, um, there's a link to Firestorm Games down below. If you click there, it helps me out with the channel side of things. So if you do fancy it, uh, click the affiliation link if you want to do some shopping there. It doesn't cost you anything. Also, go check out Geek Gaming for all your basing and hobby needs. They are an amazing shop. Uh, Luke's a great friend, and I know he puts the, the utmost effort into all the products he sells. So if you are looking for any kind of terrain or basing needs, Geek Gaming is your one-stop shop. Lastly, please check out Chilling War Gamers and the Chilling Network. I'm a proud member of them. Uh, we do a, a podcast every Thursday with guests. It can range from normal YouTubers, low YouTubers to high-ranking YouTubers, uh, manufacturers of companies, and so on and so forth. It's a great show, so if you get a chance, head on over there on a Thursday evening at 8 o'clock English time. I don't know, I think that's BST, but depending if we're in the summer or not, but you know, you get the idea. Also as well, we have the Chilling Network. There's a group of other content creators like myself, all part of a group. If you're ever at a loss of things to watch, go check some of the links below and I guarantee you'll find something you like. So until next time everyone, stay safe and take it steady. I'll see you then.